Okay, what we stopped was we were looking at the direct comparison year by year with Peter here tying to 122, that's here on the left. That's how many, because if you go from the actual year AD he's writing to convert to the year AD that Paul is writing, the year AD, then you got this text here corresponding to Paul's years, 104, okay, really starting here, just to here. That's the first parallel, there are two. That's the first parallel, and we went through that in the last increment. Now we're introducing the second parallel, and this is where it gets really, um, how do you want to call it, awesome. The number of actual syllables that Peter is at here is not 122. That's the number of years AD. But remember, he started basing it on 84, which incorporated um, Herod's destruction of the second temple and rebuilding of a third temple according to what he thought was Solomon's specs. So the actual syllable count, if we went syllable for syllable tracking to Paul, the actual syllable count in Peter is not 122. That's the year. The actual number of syllables at this point in Peter is 140. Okay, that's the actual number of syllables. And whenever you got a paragraph that's divisible by seven in meter, it's tying back to something. It's telling you a message of itself, and it's tying back to something. What's the message of itself? Well, there were 140 years. Here, let me pull this up a little. 140 is a play on the number of years. I'll just click on it so that you can see it. 140 is a play on the number of years between 586 B.C. and 446 B.C., in Daniel 9. Daniel was given a prophecy by God that he was reading in Jeremiah, Daniel 9 2. Jeremiah 25, the prophecy was given in 586 BC when the temple went down, temple down, that 70 years would have to elapse before it could be rebuilt and then God would bring them back. Okay, but there was also an issue about Jerusalem being rebuilt which we don't find out about until Daniel 9.25. And scholars have been wrapped up in their panties for years over this. And all manner of mistaken, let's call it mistaken, because it's not necessarily false. All manner of mistaken usages of the numbers in Daniel has resulted from that. Because everybody's looking for some human king to decree the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And even in dispensationalism, this is a, a stain on dispensationalists, okay? They've been saying, well, see, if the human king was, was Artaxerxes in 444, giving the decree to Nehemiah to go rebuild Jerusalem. Okay, but did anybody bother to look at the text? First of all, there's no decree by Artaxerxes or any other human king to rebuild Jerusalem. Secondly, there was no Jerusalem to rebuild. The only thing that was down when Nehemiah went back were the walls. And those walls were rebuilt in 52 days. Go look at Nehemiah 6.15 yourself. He rebuilt the walls in 52 days. Yeah, well, you could rebuild the walls that much, but if you were rebuilding the whole of Jerusalem, it would take a lot longer. And the temple was still up. It wasn't down. So all those scholars busy telling you that there must have been a human king and they have endless debates on which human king it might have been, but no evidence that there actually was a human king other than Cyrus saying build. And that was back in Daniel's day. And they just all twist the text in Daniel to try to make it fit their numbers. And they do it wrong. First of all, they use lunar years when the Bible only uses solar years. And you've got 19,222 different interpretations of Daniel 9 as a result of all of them screwing it up. Okay, Daniel 9 2 tells you the decree is made by God in 586 BC to Jeremiah and Jeremiah 25 and 29. Daniel 9 2 tells you he was reading Jeremiah at the time. Okay, and then Daniel 9 24 is a decree by who? God in the mouth of Gabriel 
saying it has been decreed 77 70 weeks have been decreed by who God it's God the king not a human king God the king duh okay but what scholars also miss is God has this policy of restoring time if you spent the time wisely all Israel was taught this you know the phrase in Ephesians 5 16 and Colossians 4 5 which properly translated should be ransoming the time redeeming the time King James Bible gets those two phrases right those two verses right the other Bibles get them wrong it's redeeming time well what does redeeming time means it means that you pay something X dollars and then you get your X dollars back and you get another X dollars because that was also a law of restitution where you pay double so God double pays the 70 years and there was 140 years which is in Isaiah's meter 140 years paid back to Israel because of that first 70 that's why it's 62 weeks which is 364 plus 70 okay that third 70 of the 140 is being paid back because you have to pay two when you lose a 70 you have to pay two 70s to get redeem the time of the minus 70 you get that all right so that's what happened that's what Peter's referencing Peter knew this or so did Paul. They're both getting it from Isaiah. And go see my Isaiah 53 meter hypothesis videos, the last couple of them, because I did a little song out of it. I made a little song out of it to show you Isaiah's perfect meter. There are no words missing in Isaiah 53. The molar scroll is wrong. It depicts a, a gap as if there were words missing. There are no words missing. Okay? So, honey, 140 is evocative of the time it took to what? Rebuild the temple. What has been Peter's theme from the beginning? Okay, he pitches his meter starting at 18 BC when the temple was what? Being rebuilt by Herod. Okay, 84 years prior to the time he writes, Herod was starting to rebuild the temple. 84 sevens prior to the time he was writing, God gave the order to Zerubbabel in Haggai 2 to start rebuilding the temple. So he's still on that theme as he will be for the rest of his letter. But he's setting it up by meter now. So why is he doing this? What is it? What are we supposed to do with this 140? Okay, fine, we get the meaning in Peter. But how does it relate to Paul? Here's how it relates to Paul. Peter's pointing you to the same period of time. Okay, well, the same period of time here, you have to add 18 years. Okay, so instead of this text starting at 104, um, what was it? 104 to 122. All right, instead of this text relating then, you count backwards from 140. So let's do that. This is 141, so we'll just have a little overage. Okay, okay, 141, that takes you to 134. And that takes you to 122. See, he's basically appending the same text twice. The first time, okay, we just saw that. The first time it went from here just to here. See how clever this is? This is awesome. The same words right here apply first. They apply double. See, because this is double. This is double 70s, so he's being really cute here. The same text that applied in plain syllable counting, it's plain year counting, went that far. We've already covered that. Okay, but once you are taking into account the actual syllables in Peter, it ends up doubling the same text. The same text we just saw now applies from here to here. The same text in Peter is applying where he left off. Now why is he doing that? And what is the significance of that text? Well, you've seen it now. 
So let's have a look. At binon, we start with ice again because that's where they're hooking together. For the purpose of into the praise of his glory, you, you translate tease as a um, case, is often used as a possessive pronoun, even though it just means the. Okay? For the purpose of, result of, resulting in, because of, the praise of of glory his grace his resulting in the praise to the glory of his grace could say of the glory of his grace okay that's too many ofs in english so that's why i use two okay resulting in that's what ice means because of the praise of the glory of his grace okay Look at how Peter's pairing the ice again. Because of the confident expectation, confident living hope, confident living expectation, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead once. Now this can't be too hard to understand. The temple is being resurrected. Only now the temple is Christians in church that started on Pentecost. See, the temple's about to be destroyed, and of course, by this point in Peter's text, it's over. Okay, because Peter knows it's going to be destroyed within the next 18 months, so does everybody else. Okay, so then what comes next? How is the temple going to be resurrected? Well, since Christ was resurrected, now built on Christ, the foundation of the temple, Zerubbabel, getting the notice in Haggai 2, Christ is going to be born on 25 Kislev, which was the date of the founding of the second temple by Zerubbabel, who then sat for 17 years doing nothing. So on the anniversary of the founding of the temple in 522 BC, Haggai 2, God through Haggai comes to visit Zerubbabel twice and says, I'm building my house on you. And you better start building my house right now. See the cuteness of that? We are built on Christ. 140 years rebuilding of the temple from the time the temple went down, including Jerusalem itself. Now this has even more bite because of the historical period that 140 is referring to. I covered this in my GGS videos already. This time, at this point, specifically 132 AD, Hadrian is in power. He's been having a lot of trouble with the Jews. The Jews are raising up a lot of opposition to him. And it finally it culminates in the Bar Kokhba Rebellion. As a result of the Bar Kokhba Rebellion, all of Jerusalem is raised. The temple, whatever was left of it, is raised. All of Jerusalem is raised. And a whole new city called Aeolia Capitolina, you can Google on that, Aeolia Capitolina, was built on top of what was Jerusalem. And no Jews were allowed in it. They were allowed to come and mourn the destroyed temple on the 9th of Ab every year. But instead of the destroyed temple being there, a pig temple was standing there. A temple to Zeus or Jupiter or something. Zeus and Jupiter mean the same thing. You see why Peter's using 140? You see why that's so important? See all this meaning and it all relates to rebuilding the temple. Due to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the temple's going to be built a different way. It's now a temple of believers. Peter's playing on Ephesians 2, the second wall, church. We have our own covenant, our own priesthood, our own everything. That will be the book of Hebrews theme, playing off Peter in the book of Hebrews. Okay? You'll be seeing that because I'll be posting the videos on that too. All right? Look. Bar Kokhba to 140. So if you take the whole phrase, resulting in the praise of his glory, which is which he's graced us out, with which he's graced us out. Yeah, graced you out, pushed you out, pushed you out of Jerusalem because you're now the living stones. That's what Peter's going to be saying. You're the living stones. You're the temple of God in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit takes up residence in you. You know those verses. 
God lives inside you. He he chooses to live where he wants. Even though, you know, he sees everything and everything's in him, that doesn't mean he chooses to be in it. He chooses to be in you. And that is all due to what? The resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what? The temple will be resurrected, made of resurrected believers. Okay? That's the whole point of it. And I'll return again in a second. The phone is ringing. Okay, I'm back. So the resurrection of the temple is us. Living stones. That's what Peter's going to say later in his letter. For the purpose of... See, he's playing directly to his part in Paul also. He had stopped here in the straight chronology. But now using the 140, he's starting here. Okay? So we, we keep reading the same phrase, but we're using the same text in Peter. Okay? With, resulting in the praise of his grace of his glory, glory of his grace, with which he has graced us out. Okay? That takes us to 140. There's a little overlap of one year. Okay? Into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead ones. The same text applies twice. So it does double duty applying from here to here. That's the first use of the same text in Peter. And then secondly, the same text in Peter applies a second time. See, 2 times 70 is 140. He's doubling it to stress the 140. Resulting in the praise of the glory of his grace with which he has graced us out. Because, because of the confident expect, living confident expectation through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead ones. See, if Christ is resurrected, he's the temple of God. The temple comes to dwell in you. Therefore, you are God's temple. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. But you're a temple of all of them. Okay? And that causes the praise to, 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 of, of the glory of his grace, with which grace he has graced us out. Now, given the historical period that Paul is referencing, which everybody knew at the time Peter wrote, this was a warning to get out of Dodge, get out of Jerusalem by 140 AD. Now, most of the people at the time people, Peter is writing are already out of Jerusalem. He's writing to what? The people in Diaspora. The only people who remained in Jerusalem at the time were people who didn't believe in Christ. Or they were fooling themselves that they were somehow suffering for God if they remained. Yeah, and at the time Peter's writing, they're under siege. The siege began roughly 64, 66 AD and lasted until 70 for the temple, until 73 for Masada. Josephus was part of Masada. He was a general trying to fight the Romans in Masada, and he gets captured. And that's how come Josephus writes his book. Okay, he's trying to cater to the Romans after he was captured. Josephus does that because they think he's, he's helping the Jews. Okay, he's trying to get, you know, Titus to be lenient to the Jews. All right, well, Peter's telling you, hi, between 122... In other words, by the time you get to this phrase, by the you know, because this is a calendar in Paul, by the time you get here, get out of Dodge. Resurrect yourself. Get resurrected out of Jerusalem. Get out. Leave. Between 122 and 140, you want to be out of there. Because by 140, what's going to happen? A pig temple's going to be standing up there. And how do you know that for sure? Well, before it happens? Because of the 140. Because 140 years after the temple went down, Jerusalem's walls got rebuilt, which means Jerusalem's walls were down, which means people were attacking Jerusalem. So guess what? They're going to do it again as a warning to the Jews who are still there and still not believing. So are you going to be among the Jews who do not believe, or are you going to get your hint from Peter, okay, even as he got it from Paul here? Get out of Jerusalem. 
Do not be there during this time. Get out. Leave. Get out. See? Diaspora. Go into diaspora. Go into diaspora. That is God's will for your life. Leave Jerusalem. Go into diaspora. Okay? And your exit window is 122 to 140. If you haven't gotten out by then, you are probably going to be destroyed in the process. Because the Bar Kokhba rebellion begins here. Okay? I mean, we know this with hindsight, but they would have been told that by, you know, pastors who were filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit knew what was going to happen. Because Peter sure knows and Paul sure knows it's right here. And that's what you'd be saying if you did get out. You'd be glorifying God's grace and you'd be saying God graced you out. Yeah, he graced you right out of Jerusalem. Okay, due to what? The resurrection of Jesus Christ. So here you are, a temple being resurrected on Jesus Christ. He's the foundation, just as he was the foundation, as told to Zerubbabel back in 522 B.C. in Haggai 2. See, if you know your Bible, and you've been studying it for a while, you can be fluent in your understanding like that. This is what our pastors should be teaching us. Instead of, is God one or three, and do I wear a hat on Sunday? Of course, pastors are only as good as the students. If there are no students who want to learn this stuff, then there are very few pastors who can teach it. Mine happened to be one of them. He did not know this meter, but he did know the meaning. And that's how come when I read the meter, I understand it so quickly. When I started these videos, you know, a couple hours ago, I didn't know what I was going to find. I'm asking God and just saying whatever comes out of my mouth and then recognizing that, yeah, that's correct or no, that's not correct. I'm fixing it. All right? What, is brain out special or somebody that's, you know, better than someone else? No, I'm probably worse than you. And it's God's sense of humor gracing me out to give me the answers while I talk. Well, what, is this the first time he's ever done that? No. It's a pattern. Paul is just talking out loud when he writes this in perfect meter, okay? When Daniel is saying his prayer to God, he's just talking out loud in front of a window. Perfect meter. When Mary says a Magnificat, she's just getting down from her donkey for crying out loud, talking to Elizabeth in perfect meter. This is what the Word of God can do to your head. So a whole bunch of people understood what this meant and passed it on to their kids. And so they did go into Diaspora. That's why Peter can write them in Diaspora, because by 68 AD, 66 AD, the temple had already been under siege by Vespasian and Titus. It depends on who you talk to. It either started in 64 AD or it started in 66, and the reason it took so long was because they were trying to negotiate with the Jews in order to avoid having to actually attack. It was on again, off again. First they tried to starve the Jews out, and then it didn't work. Actually, all this stuff erupted under Florus. Some argue it er erupted under James. Because when James decided to defect, then um, the Jews got upset with James and killed him. And apparently that caused an uproar in Jerusalem, which I guess the Romans couldn't quell, and so they started the siege. I'm not real sure about what actually started the siege. Those are just the stories I've read. Okay, but whatever it was, hello, Paul knows. He's warning you, get out of Dodge, see? Our Cockpit Rebellion is going to start right here, and by 140, 140, see, big evocative reminder to the Jews who kept time like this. All the Jewish calendars keep time like this. Everything I'm telling you about counting the syllables and the years, this is how the Jews did it. That's how they still do it today. Their own calendars keep time like this. It's been 140 years since blah. It's been 500 X number of years since the temple. It's been this number of years since we had our last king. That's how they kept time. So that's how the meter keeps time. 140 years from Christ's birth, there's going to be a pig temple. In other words, 140 years prior to Christ's birth, he was in the temple getting his breasts on the eighth day, which was required by the Mosaic Law. That's the story that Luke covers, wrapping around Matthew. Okay, 140 years later, there's going to be a pig temple standing where Christ used to be 
in the regular temple getting his press at eight days old. Is this ironic or what? Okay, so now let's read the text again. Into the praise of his of the grace of his glory, the glory of his grace, in which we've been graced out, because of the living confident expectation due to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead ones. In other words, hi, you're the new living stones. A new temple's going to be built. And by the way, you want to get out before what's left of the old temple is destroyed in Jerusalem with it by 140 AD. Isn't that clever? So now if we go back over the whole thing again. Oh, please tell me, am I still recording? Oh, this is such... I always got my heart in my mouth when I make these videos. First meaning here. Going all the way here. Into his airship, sonship through Jesus Christ was how that started, but it stops at just Christ. Okay? Into whom, into him, per Father's delight, which is, as it were, the will and testament of him. Okay? And then we get our first reading of the Peter text. Into the living, confident expectation due to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead ones. Okay? And then we come back to Paul again. Into the praise of the grace, uh, the praise of the glory of his grace, in which grace we've been graced out. Then back to Peter again, because of, see it's almost like a refrain or a chorus, because of the confident living hope due to his resurrection from the dead ones. And by the way, get out by 140, because all Jerusalem is going to be raised on the same kind of timeline as it was raised the first time. Isn't that clever? Now that you know how to use the text, not only with reference to matching the syllables to the syllables in Paul, but also because the total real syllables in Peter are farther ahead, you now know how to interpret this thing which matches syllable to syllable AD to AD. In other words, these are years AD in Paul. They're syllables, but they're also years AD in Paul. So you have to convert them to years AD in Peter, which is not the same as the number of syllables. Okay, you're going to have an 18-year spread going from here on forward. So you're going to have an 18-syllable doubling of reading the same text in Peter interspersed with the corresponding syllables of Paul. Now try playing with that because I could do that, but it's going to it would just take many more videos and I think you're going to have more fun if you try to do it yourself. Now you've seen the pattern. Let me know if you have any problems or questions and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Sorry this is all original research and new information, but you can check it yourself. We just went through that. It's not hard. Peace out.